Okay, I believe we've started recording. So, um, hello everyone. Uh, good morning, good day, good evening. It's not evening anywhere, hopefully, from where you're joining because that would be a really, really uh, sad time to join. It probably is late in the night, if that's the case. But um, today is... Um, the second surprising meeting of uh, the Chaos Asia chapter. And uh, it's also the 2nd of May. So um, the uh, hopefully, and uh, I'm going to make a conscious decision to actually have my calendar remind me of this because we've been switching up calendar invites uh, a little bit here. So that's been a challenge, uh, but uh, we're going to streamline that process and have people subscribe to the feed directly. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm happy that we at least have one more person here. Uh, and I have a couple of exciting updates that I want to share with you all based on the events that I've attended so far. But, um, yeah, I'm going to pause there for a bit um, and uh, let our attendees introduce themselves. Um, Roland and uh, Manul, I know you all have talked to each other and Roland has talked to me. So do you all want to introduce yourself again? You can go first, Manul. Okay. So hello all, I'm Manul from India. Uh, this is my second meeting uh, attending for Chaos. And I'm very excited to be part of the organization and contributing in every way possible. Yeah, that's a little bit introduction about my. Okay. And uh, Roland, do you want to go next? Yeah, my name's Roland. Uh, I'm from Melbourne in Australia. Uh, I work at a medical research institute called WeHi. And I, I popped on to the Monash University campus just because it's closer to my house and uh, I like catching up here. So there's a lot of people here, which is surprising because sometimes it's quite, it's very quiet. Yeah, so I'm going to mute myself when I can, but I'm kind of just interested in hanging out and Divya, uh, I know how tough it is to get to get these things going. So I'm sort of here for moral support and, and uh, yeah. even to pick your brains around, because um, I'm also the co-chair of the RSE Asia Australia Conference. And I'd like to sort of tap into people's networks about who might be a good speaker for a keynote for the for the conference as well. So I'm sort of doing it for a couple of reasons. So yeah, I mean, whatever works, right? Like it's all open source. We're all one big. Um, I want to say happy, but uh, <laughs> let's not kid ourselves. Uh, so <laughs> one big family. Uh, so um, I mean. If, if we can be of any help, let us know. So I've posted the agenda uh, documentation in the chat. Uh, please uh, enter your names in the attendees section. Um, I actually forgot uh, the question for the day sort of thing that we did last time around. Uh, unfortunately, I could not find the link of uh, questions that we could ask each other. Uh, about how our week went or whatever. I only had that one question. So unfortunately, um, I'll have to ping back Elizabeth once again when she is back in the evening uh, to ask her for that link. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I also think I should introduce myself. I am Divya. I know that you already know that. But uh, <clears throat> I am uh, one... I mean, I, I'm hopefully one of the leads uh, for the Chaos Asia chapter. Uh, right now, the only one, but um, as we're expanding, I uh, hope to bring on many more people and uh, to help co-lead this effort because Asia is a huge, 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 huge continent. Um, in the open source space, I do a bunch of things. Um, I work with uh, Sousa as a technology advocate and um, i'm also maintainers for uh, a maintainer for a couple of projects so uh, yeah i mean outside of chaos i do a bunch of things um, as extracurriculars you can say <laughs> in uh, the open source space and uh, that's probably i think uh, setting the tone for the next segment as to uh, uh you know 
the updates from you know the recently attended KubeCon and Open Source Summit and Foz Asia, uh, because we've had a lot of lovely conversations um in all of these um uh, conferences that I attended over the past week, uh, not past week, sorry, past month, um and. Uh, a lot of there was a lot of interest, uh, specifically from uh, the Asian diaspora, uh, around uh, for uh, this effort. So, um, firstly, I also want to pause because I uh, realized that nobody's taking notes. Is it possible for anyone to take notes? Um, I always, always, always have that problem that I don't ask anyone to take notes of what we're talking, and then I lose track. And then I have to rejog the my own memory, which is very bad. So, does anybody want to volunteer? I'll, I'll for try. Notes? I'll try. Okay. Yeah. So, um, essentially, at uh, Force Asia and at um, um, Open Source Summit, um, we had um, uh, we had a lot of conversations. One of them, uh was with uh, uh you know members from the chinese community uh specifically the open euler um project under the open atom foundation they uh actually already have a collaboration going on uh, uh in terms of a special interest group uh that uh, ties in with chaos to help in their uh, community building efforts. So uh, their uh, localization experts um, and uh, even I think William, uh, who is I think one on the board of Open Euler, um, uh, they were very interested in the Asian initiative specifically. Um, and uh, they wanted to talk further uh, about how they could make their mark in this specific area and how they could contribute. Uh, that's the first update. Um, uh, I'll pause. Uh, do you all have any questions on that? Or do you all have any concerns or suggestions or whatever? Manu, do you have any questions? No, it's fine. I can't what? remember, Divya. Huh? You know, it was an older, Post talk or an older some other talk, but there was a lady uh, who was talking about you know open source wanting to connect to Asia, and I can't remember who who gave that talk. And I thought that was quite a nice uh, sort of segue to introduce why we're why why you're doing this, right? Yeah. Um, because Asia tends to get left behind. Usually, it's time zones for Europe and and America, yep. and this is sort of like the third the third leg, if you know yep. what I mean. I'll see if I can yep. dig it out, but it, it just really reminded me of that. And I did watch FOSS Asia event, and that was so cool when they uh, introduced it in two languages all the time. I thought that was really, really nice as well. That so. was, yep. Yeah, so, I mean, if you could get that talk, that would be really helpful. I could potentially reach out to that speaker as well and see if you know there are any networks that I can tap into who'd be interested in this uh, initiative reason being um, again uh, uh, coming back to the update section the next update that I have that you already are aware of uh, is that we've also uh, spoken to the uh, Japanese working group uh, for uh, the open chain project and this was more around standardization right um and uh standardization with respect to the metrics that we've already developed it's one of the goals for the chaos project to standardize the metrics so that they lead to industry adoption etc so it's one of the goals for 2024 so i reached out to them and uh uh, they were also very interested in collaborating, but again, uh, the concern is uh, how do we drive that? And uh, the concern is how how would they like uh, synergize with us in terms of like uh, engaging with the community? Because uh, 
the metrics and the metric models and even uh, in your case Roland I believe you know that the other meetings are uh, you know except the Asian chapter are at very unfriendly times for, for a lot of people so uh, um, we, we were like uh, brainstorming on how, how this could be done and uh, I think one of the ways that we sort of came up with is if there's a sufficient amount of um, you know, driving force behind a particular project, so to say, um, we could, or, you know, behind a particular initiative, say, like a metric model or, a, um, <clears throat> say, for example, research or whatever, like one of the working groups, there's like a, a sufficient amount of people interested in that. We could have like a representation, an intermediate representation, go and provide updates and communicate a sync. Uh, but again, that requires a significant amount of driving force uh, behind that particular initiative. And this is what I think would work because uh, in certain um, regions of Asia, they prefer collaborating within themselves as opposed to, you know, joining meetings regularly like we do. And that's completely fine. It's a cultural thing. I respect it. Uh, but also they would be expected to join on maybe a monthly or a uh, you know a monthly cadence to give updates so that we understand where this is going so that was what was a suggestion um do you all have any other uh, you know ideas around how we could collaborate better with uh these specific communities because uh that's another thing that we need to figure out right like um like we are inviting all these communities, but we do not really have the, um, you know, plan drawn out as to how we engage with them because they're not really um, integrating completely with us. They are interested in very specific areas, just like all of us are. So um, how do we help them integrate better with chaos? Uh, if you all have any ideas, I'm really, really uh, curious to listen to them. I've got some ideas, but I don't want to hog the conversation. So, Manuel, I'll, I'll defer to you first if you had any ideas. I think your idea about having an intermediate representative uh, for communication and joining, asking them to join monthly meetings would be fine. Like it depends on the uh, uh, what amount of efforts uh, are required in the collaborative work and the specific needs they are interested in. Okay. Uh, Roland, you? Sorry, I was. I found that. Uh, I found that talk. <laughs> Yay! Uh, so let me just grab that so I don't lose it. Um, where should I put it? Where should I put it? You can put it in the agenda oh. so that it's there for like uh, posterity. <laughs> I'm talk pretty sure about about it. Asia in Asia. Oh yeah, I have. Source. I have this talk. I have this talk. Yeah, yeah. I actually based my own open source in Asia talk on this. Uh, to be honest, and I met with the speaker uh, as well at um, I want to say I want to say State of Open Con, but I'm not really sure uh, because I've met I bumped into her at a bunch of uh, events recently. But that, that uh, is yeah, so cool. The... That is yeah. so cool that you're you you go to these conferences. I don't, so it's very very yeah. nice. To... She's I think VMware OSPO. I think she's VMware OSPO uh, or broadcom ospo now because vmware's been acquired so yeah essentially please can't i'm sorry no no that's all right um so the way i tend to work in these situations when it's very new i use an advocacy-based approach so i'm not promising anything okay all i can do is promise to advocate to people when i talk to them so the promise is the advocacy. The promise isn't uh, we're going to deliver X, Y, Z. 
So what I mean by advocacy, there's this, uh, yeah, wait, 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 wait. what's the easiest way to show you this? Uh, it's a so like the, the the four stages of ag advocacy is something like, you know, can you tell me what you're looking for so that if I find someone who might be interested, I can I can share what you're looking for with someone else. So I'll I'll keep you in mind and I'll I'll try to find ways to to help you out if I can. So that's the first stage, and then the second stage is actually, I think I I saw an opportunity. Is this the kind of opportunity that you're looking for? And then the third stage right. is, hey, I know what kind of opportunities you're looking for. I found this opportunity that I know will suit you. Why don't you have a look? And then the fourth stage is I've created an opportunity especially for you. So these are the four stages of advocacy. And um, the idea is that you can have a look at them here. You're on this leadership course. And... Um, so what I would be doing is I'd be going to Open Eula and to the, I don't know how I, if I spelled that other name wrong and say, what are you looking for? What would help you? I'll share what you're looking for and how it might help you with other people. And if there's, if there's opportunities, I'll pass them back to you just to see if they're, if they're accurate or not. I can't do much more than that, but let's see how we go. And when you have that mindset, uh, it just means that if there is any uh, alignment of ideas or values or, or you know, the same sort of shared vision, you're more likely to find that over time. So I wouldn't be too stressed about saying, you know, what's the process of how we're going to do or even what the vision is. I think you could I've, – I've gotten a lot of mileage – from very, very complex situations and lots of diverse stakeholders by following this advocacy-based approach. I think that's uh, fair, uh, what you're saying. And that's precisely what I'm trying to do, but with not with respect to the open chain, because they definitely have like already a thing which they want to work on. Like they know what they want to work on with respect to metrics, because um, uh, the Japanese uh, open chain working group, they were very, very, uh, uh, you know, firm that they wanted standardization of metrics because they wanted to convey the value back to their respective organizations. So they were very interested in the standardization. So maybe with them, what you just said actually does work. Like we've already reached the stage. So that is one part. But with Open Eula, I think, we you know initiate the process with the first part and i think i've already done it but um again to get them engaged is another thing because they have like very different means of communication they do not have the same slack channel uh zoom meeting sort of you know collaboration model that typically the west and outside of china normally the people that they fall uh that people follow they don't have that. They have like a different uh, meeting standardization uh, uh, thing going on. They have like, I don't even think they use Google. Um, and I'm pretty sure they don't. And uh, they, in almost all of their collaboration takes place on a different platform altogether. Um, well, so, uh, to me, that's, that's, um, fairly, I mean, just... that's, that's fairly minor. I think that the point there is like with the open chain, it's like, okay, they're looking for standardization. If you come across anyone who's working with Japanese open source that doesn't know about us, maybe you can redirect them to there if they were interested in standardization. Because I'm actually going to be talking about two or yep. three people who work in research. Um, they're yep. sort of research adjacent that uh, I might point them out to. And that's, so you've already started advocating for them pretty much by yep. explaining yep. what they're looking for. Yep. With the open EULA, it might be, well, your, your, trying to see if there's anyone who's interested in working with that. If you understood what their aims were within their communities and their platforms, you can maybe point them out to that. And that would actually go, well, oh, you know, Divya is doing a great job of, you know, reminding us that she reached it when she was talking to this person that she mentioned over in Eula. Um, they didn't come along, but it's nice to know that she's thinking of it. And that allows you yeah. to sort of help continue to have that relationship. And then 
something might come out of it. Maybe not now, maybe not even the way that you think about it. it might be coming out in a in some other weird way in the future, but that could be still pretty cool. Yeah, I think that is a very good approach. And I'll I'll speak further. Like I've gotten contacts, but I really do not like I did not know how to approach this and I wanted to take like the consensus of people who are already there in this uh, group to understand if you all had any ideas. Uh, <clears throat> because with respect to Open Euler as a bit stamp, because their communication channels are utterly different. Like with uh, Open Chain, we still had the common ground of uh, it being under the Linux Foundation. So they followed the same processes in terms of like Slack and everything else. But um, Open Eula has a totally different. Um, it's not even. Uh, it's not even about Slack or anything. I can't access most of the things that uh, uh, they communicate on. As uh, someone based out of India and who's gotten most of the software that they use, um, <clears throat> sort of um, banned on their uh, on their phones. So I can't even communicate with them in general. So I'm trying to find a middle ground. That's 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 the thing that I was looking out for. But I think. Uh, uh, since we've like since there is still access to LinkedIn and uh, a basic, you know, a small channel open, I am gonna see if I can join one of their meetings and also understand what are their objectives with respect to community building because they're still a very new project. Uh, they've just been around for four years, and uh, they're trying to build a community, a global community at that, and um, their presence uh at various global um, conferences is noted like I, I've seen them at several conferences and I know that they exist but uh, they're uh, they're facing challenges and uh, that's I think the thing that they are primarily looking to um, you know grow in terms of uh, I mean seek help on and grow in terms of you know uh, the Open Eula project in specific. Like, I do not know of any other projects under the Open Atom Foundation, but uh, this one is, this one, the manager herself told me that this is a problem that they're facing because a lot of their content, a lot of their, uh, uh, you know, even target audience is mostly region specific. That is uh, relegated to the Chinese uh, Chinese community. It's not like, it's not successfully moved outside of it and that's a challenge that they're facing so maybe i delve a little deeper into how and what are they doing to address these challenges and probably see if we can be of help anywhere and then take the conversation forward because i want to engage in a meaningful way not just like get them in and help them do translations which is again meaningful but i don't think it's of much use uh if you know you're just engaging people to do translations just that. I mean, other than that, also there's value, but just that might not be of a lot of value, in my opinion. What are your thoughts, Manu? Pardon me? Yeah. I was just asking Manu what his thoughts might be. Yeah, I agree with Divya to get a little bit more context about what they want and uh, what are their requirements. So she would be engaging once more. So that would be fine to come on a common ground for communication and uh, other aspects of chaos. Yeah, I, I think what you're doing is very much advocacy-based approach. And I can see, Divya, that they might appreciate you giving feedback on what I'd love to contribute, but I'm seeing these roadblocks. And so explaining these roadblocks to them, saying if you were to grow, this is the this is the barriers that people are fa might be facing. Truly, yeah. And uh, one of the other things that I was um, that just came up in while I was talking to you all about this is um, also that um, one of the things we can do to sort of uh, you know broaden our scope i don't know if there'll be any followers anywhere on social media but uh just throwing it out there and i also asked elizabeth about this uh whether we wanted a um a twitter account for this because uh chaos africa in specific has had a um 
a lot of success with drawing in people from Twitter. And I was wondering if we wanted to follow the same approach. Like, happy to create a Twitter account uh, <clears throat> because Chaos has a LinkedIn account and it also has a lot of engagement on there. Um, and I intend to start posting starting next um like starting before our next meeting to actually attract contributors uh, from the chaos account as well. So I've been given access to the LinkedIn account. Do we want to create something similar on Twitter as well? Would that help? Manu, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, Twitter might be a good place to attract the new contributors, I guess. Surely we could give a try. Uh, the only thing I would, my suggestion would be, uh, if Chaos Asia has a, a website on, on Chaos, that might be a, a good start so you can point people to more details. Uh, I guess it depends on how how uh, much time and energy you have as well, right? I can't um, really. It depends. I can't really like, I also work with technical advocacy. I also work with technical advocacy. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you say that again, Debbie? Um, Or my friend. Did I freeze up there for a bit? Uh, yes, you did. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm uh, audible, invisible. I can hear you now. All right. So I was just saying, yeah, I mean, please continue. I was just saying I'm working in technical advocacy. So I anyway manage um, accounts. Uh, for social media so I can take on the responsibility for now and hopefully delegate it going ahead to people who join in uh, but uh, essentially if um, uh, like if that's a good idea I can start it off I mean I don't want to um, you know pressurize anyone in starting it off but uh, if it's if it's a fairly good idea to join people I would start it off how did we how did we find chaos a that's my question. I can't remember. I think it was when the Chaos DEI badges came out. Manu, no, how so did you? I, how did? I don't know how Manu found it out. Uh, found it out. Can Manu say how he found it out? Because I have a very, very weird way of finding out things. So I'm not going to go into my rabbit hole. <laughs> uh, so I think uh, if I could remember, I got to know about Chaos from Devya's LinkedIn post that uh, Asian chapter is again being uh, reorganized. So, yeah, I joined it. Am I audible? Yep. I, I heard y'all. Uh, I heard both of you. Hmm. Uh, so, I think there's value to social media. Just I just need to know whether we're going to get uh, an audience. The reason I'm still very dicey about Twitter is that... Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what the audience is for uh, Chaos Asia on Twitter. Uh, and there's no real way to judge engagement on Twitter because it's very sporadic. So 
um it's very difficult to judge engagement um and judge any actual conversion metric on twitter because again very sporadic so uh, first my I suggestion think, would be yeah i was just going to say my suggestion would be where are all of the key pieces of information you do on on social media right now you might be able to amplify the voice and start there and then just sort of trial and error i would guess Testing and, also, and also, I think we need to um sort of um uh you know revamp our chaos Asia page because uh it's it's not really uh up to date. I think we have one. Sorry, I'm really sorry about that. It's my morning allergies. Uh, but um, uh, I do think we have a chaos Asia page, and uh. We just need to modify that as well. Um, the reason being, I uh, it's out of date right now, and um, it is not really helping if uh, people do not find a um, you know, link to it. I did see it somewhere, but I do not find it right now. Um, so let me see if I can surface that up on our uh, main um thing um or does anybody want to take that um as their action item like manul do you want to check out how to do that like surface that up and uh, sort of uh <clears throat> bring it uh to the forefront like i can help you um but it would be very helpful if you can you know do this um not again forcing you i will get to it if you can't but uh, this would be very helpful to give it as like a pointer, even when you are starting off on social media, like, hey, this is our page on the Kiosk website. So we are an official chapter. So is that something you could do? Yeah, sure. You could take it up. Yeah. So I will, um, I mean, we can work together and uh, figure out where that page is firstly. And uh, there's a lot of uh, stuff around that page that needs to be changed and we need to work alongside it. And uh, that uh, we'll also need to consult uh, Elizabeth Barron to uh, figure out how to change that. But uh, we can work together on it. Does that sound okay? Yes, yeah, sure. Currently, I am also not able to find that key of Asia. Yeah, it was there though. That is the thing. Like, I'm not sure where it is. I saw the page on the website, uh, but I'm not able to find it right now. Uh, uh, so, and yeah. for the Twitter thing, I was thinking like, could you use the main chaos Twitter handle and there post it that our Asia chapter is back and then attract new contributors from there? Um, we can, we we sure can. The only thing is, um, I'll need access to that. Um, the and also I don't know if a lot of Asian contributors are there on. Uh, um. On like, you know, Asian contributors are there following the chaos uh, project page. Like I just went through the link. I we, Your idea is great. I'm not saying no, but uh, I, like, I don't know how to attract the Asian diaspora to the chaos project. That's that's on, via social media again. Like somebody with significant reach in the Asian diaspora has to do it. So that's why I was very, um, um, you know, not really for the chaos um, handle actually amplifying it. But if you think that will help it, we could sort of do something about it. Uh, like uh, not every time, just for the start, I think we could use it. Then we could move to our own handle or Twitter account. Yeah, we can try. We can definitely try and ask... Um, this one um i'll try asking um what's her name elizabeth about elizabeth. the next yeah so that's one thing i will try or uh, getting in place by our next meeting and also we should try figuring out where that chapter page is on chaos website and getting it updated so that can also be like a pointer we can drive people to and uh, we can have more people come in yeah so I think we at least have uh two action items for both of our uh for uh, us and uh, 
Roland, do you have anything uh, that you want to... I know that you said that uh, you... Uh, uh, that you can't uh, basically... Uh, I mean, you can't basically find stuff because it's confusing when looking at DEI, uh, DEI badges and you can't do much action-wise. But do you have anything that you want to, you know... Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to just be here to... Uh, be an extra person to bounce ideas off, really. I, yeah. I'm pretty full up in the terms of the the other stuff that I do, and I'm probably, I might be oversubscribed very, very quickly. So, so yeah, for I mean, me, I'm... um, if this is helpful, if this is helpful, I can keep coming to the meeting. You can, just, you, you can use me as a sounding board. That is absolutely helpful because uh, sometimes I do think that uh, I, I'm just like, I'm just full of shit most of the time. So it really does help if there's somebody. Uh, and I think we lost Roland at this bit. But uh, <clears throat> having him around as a sounding board definitely helps. And uh, Manul, um, if you know you know of any other people interested in contributing to open source uh, in general, because I know that there's a lot of interest um, uh, in like contributing to open source and not understanding where to start, um, it would be very helpful if you could spread the word about the chaos project. Again, like using the advocacy-based initiative. It's not necessary that you have to tell them that, hey, join the call right away. I'm not expecting that. But uh, if there's something Sorry, I, that... I dropped off. Yeah, that's completely I dropped fine. Off. It's fine. Bad internet affects everyone. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't catch up... I... I didn't catch what you were saying. I was asking if it was useful to, to It was useful. It is useful. Um, it is extremely useful because I sometimes do think I'm full of shit and um, I need somebody to like uh, tell me that, you know, this is okay and or whether, you know, it is not okay because sometimes I just can be uh, too full of the fact that I have uh, so many opinions and only they are right. So this would really help and it would also have like a uh, general Sorry, my internet. balancing effect, yeah. My internet's getting worse, I think. Hello? Um, Manol, can you hear me? Yeah, you are audible. Okay, so I think... Uh, Roland, can you hear me now? I think he's um sort of inaudible yeah. but yeah I'm i think we... yeah hi uh, i'll be back i'm gonna log back in yeah yeah sure sure no problem uh do you can check out i posted a link to a local chapter of your face here just a second uh oh where do you post it yeah i think uh local chapters is what we want to look at um yeah so we do not have the billy billy space and bunch of that so that is what we need to change uh and we need to change this entire thing so um i think this one of the things that we need to change is also local chapters we need to do this um we need to work alongside each other to figure figure this out and uh, we'll we'll figure this out don't worry yeah i'm back hi so we finally found out the page for uh chaos asia i mean it is not a full-fledged page but uh we can definitely sort of modify it because it's currently pointing to only the chinese and the china community so uh we have to change this the page is uh linked on the chat and i think uh this is the right one i'll post it again and uh maybe uh Maybe, uh, Manul, what you can do is also add this to the agenda item here, uh, um, agenda item doc rather, uh, so that everybody has an overview of what we're changing, uh, and what we dis uh, discussed during this call. Does that sound okay? Sure, sure, yeah. And I wanted to ask you that apart from our 
this meeting group is there any other chinese uh, group under chaos asia which is also active or working no it's not so this was the one that was uh, the chinese group that was active prior um <clears throat> and unfortunately or um uh, uh, during the last year itself, I think there was a die down uh, in terms of like the number of meetings and engagement because the uh, lead for Chaos Asia pre uh, previous to me uh, had to uh, pursue a PhD and uh, she got busy with that. So um, <clears throat> she, she can support us uh, in like making inroads and that's a conversation I plan to have with her uh, once things settled down a bit for her, but uh, yeah, that's it. Was it was there? The Chinese community was the one that was uh, sort of active on chaos uh, earlier on. Okay, got it. Yeah. So I think we're almost uh up for our meeting in terms of time. Uh, does anybody have any last thoughts? Yeah, just for me, just for my benefit, thinking of any, uh, um, we've got RSE Asia Australia coming up in September. Okay. I'm still going to think about, uh, I really would like to see if I can find um, an Asia, an Asian, uh, a speaker who lives in Asia, ideally non-white, non-male, who could... Um, give a talk, uh, you know, around sort of like the architecture that they do. So if you if you think of anyone, uh, just let me know. Um, right. Um, can you post the link to that conference, please? Um, I'd, I'd be happy to, um, you know, amplify it within my networks uh, to be uh, like to gather the right folks because I have a pretty... Uh, um widespread network so i can i can ask people if they're interested like at least so or just to yeah just to, because um yeah i just put it in there um we've got we've got some people but like i said i'm trying to make the i try to make the speakers as diverse as possible so i don't mind spending a little bit more time and energy try to find it, but I've got people that I could go to. I just don't want to go to the same people all the time, if you know what I mean. I so completely understand. Um so I will I'll personally um uh, check out my networks and see if anyone's interested. Uh thank you for sharing this link. I will keep this in mind. And maybe I'll have something to report uh by our next meeting, hopefully. Uh yeah, no, there's no rush there's no rush on this. We'll we we talked to other people and we going through our list of speakers it's just i'm in it's in the same boat that you were saying before divya like sometimes i just like i just need someone else to to make a decision to help me work through some things and yep. you know it's it, again it's all about you know mutual benefit if you can get mutual benefit from whatever we do then it will continue otherwise it, it won't it won't continue so absolutely so so I think uh, again we're up for the hour. Um, Manul, do you have any last thoughts before we part? Um, um, I know that we've uh dumped the biggest agenda item on your name. So, <laughs> so do you want uh do you have any last thoughts before we go ahead and wrap up the call? Uh, no, no, it's fine from my side. All right, then. Uh, thank you so much both for attending, and uh, I look forward to seeing you. Um in the next fortnight i guess and uh, we'll be in touch on slack uh, so do not worry about that and uh, we each have agenda items uh, to look forward to so i think we'll see each other in a fortnight then thank you so much for attending and uh, see you around have a happy day nice to meet you manu thanks yeah. divya thank you so much have a great one bye bye everyone.